Good morning. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff we've got growing in the garden and a little bit about our compost. So stay tuned. Okay, so last video we talked about our rabbits and how we're basically feeding them up with grass and Valerie's actually using the grass we collected this morning to feed them. So we thought we'd talk about the rabbits a little bit and some of the systems that we're using to take all this organic material from our homestead and create some systems and cycle those around in a beneficial way to us. Here's Valerie, she's got a pretty a bin full of grass we've cut. It yeah, well, it took me about five, 10 minutes to get that up with the manual mower. You can kind of see how much she's given them. We don't have any dry food. We're going to go get some dry food today. So we're just feeding them more grass today. But that's about what they get a day. They'll get a bit about a handful like that or so. And then um, in the uh, mornings, we'll usually give them some dry feed. And in the afternoons, we're giving them this grass. So these more, a few more bunnies in the cage, so they'll get a little bit more. See how they're ready to eat. Very good. They love the stuff. Love it. They love it way more than they love the dry food. If they've got a choice, they'll go for this first. All right. So what happens is I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit of this happening here. Is as the rabbits are eating the grass above, what's happening below is a little bit of the grass. I'd say about 10% of what we feed them is kind of falling through the bottom of the cage and it's going to the floor underneath them and so we tried several solutions um, to try to ca capture that grass keep it from falling through to, to preserve that but so far everything we've tried just the rabbits basically if you put a bowl of grass in there they poop and pee in the bowl and so it becomes a big mess they get messy just kind of nasty so we just decided we would deal with the, the loss but it's actually not really a loss because what we're going to do is take this grass is falling through so you got grass clippings and you also got their manure that's falling through and to the ground and just a second here I'm going to show you how we get that up and what we do with that so this is going to be something to work out really nice with the mixture of man rabbit manure and grass clippings
Okay, so I'm just taking this shovel, flat nose shovel, scooping all this up, the grass, the rabbit manure. I actually have a little bit of dirt from one of the potato buckets that we pulled in there. That'll go back to the compost pile so and kind of be, you know, be on line. So we're just basically getting this up and moving this to the compost pile. We'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so this is about what I've got here from about a week's worth of rabbit manure grass here. And not a full wheelbarrow full, but pretty pretty, uh, pretty close. Now, what we have here, this is something you gotta consider when, when our experiment here in our homestead is to try to grow as much food as we possibly can on this half acre that we're kind of focusing on. But if you're doing that, you're gonna, like for instance, if you just broke up a piece of ground this year and planted, more than likely because it, unless the soil is just terrible, more than likely it's going to grow good that year, maybe the second year decently. About the third year, if you're not putting something back into the soil, you're depleting the soil. So it's important to take all the organic material that you have and get it back into your soil. So we're trying not to lose anything that's organic here, and we're trying to manage it and make a, uh, put it to a purpose. So we'll show you some of the things we've got going on so far with that. So as you can see, I took all the material from the uh, rabbit manure, the grass clippings, and I put them in this first this bin right here. Also, you probably saw me raking around. What happens is over time, the rain washes a little bit. Chickens get in there and scratch and turn, which is good. That's what we want them to do. So periodically, I'll come in and rake that stuff up, just put it back in that pile. So that's breaking down. You got here, you've got uh, limbs, leaves, rabbit manure, the grass. You probably couldn't tell it, but every time I was, just about every time I turn the rake or the shovel, there's an earthworm un underneath that, and that's a good sign because that means they're really helping to break that stuff down. So this is the pile that our manure and stuff like that goes to. Okay, so this pile here is basically kind of mulch and more larger organic matter, uh, like for instance, these limbs that fall from the trees here pretty regularly. If you have a lot of water oaks or trees in your yard, you'll get a lot of this stuff. So basically, this pot here serves to keep that stuff. And then I've got these loppers here. I usually just cut these down into smaller pieces a little bit so that they uh, can break down a little bit more easily. This is more like mold, larger pieces of limbs and stuff that'll break down. So over time, what should happen is this stuff will break down to a more granular, uh, mulch like substance we can mix that with the manure and the grass and stuff that's breaking down there and then we'll show you the third part of our composting situation here in just a second and this is another part of it uh, this is where we actually use the organic matter the food the waste scraps from the house this bucket sits pretty much by the trash can anything that's food goes into it from eggshells to uh, bread that's going bad if you look into the pile now okay so basically what you see is you've got a lot of vegetables anything that's going bad from the kitchen goes out here the chickens pick over it what they don't pick over uh, decomposes it gets scattered out on the ground we rake that up and we put it over into the compost bed so one of the cool things about having chickens is you don't have to waste anything they basically turn whatever edible into eggs for you so they're like nature's recycler so you got that going on here so you've got your vegetable compost breaking down here you've got
got your manure right here. You've got your mulches right there. There's a fourth thing that we really want to put out here. We're, we're trying to recycle and keep cardboard because we found the cardboard makes a really good weed barrier. And we'll show you that in a minute with oak leaves that we gather from the yard. <coughs> and there's Rehoboam, just letting you know he's around. But these four areas, once we get that set up, will be our major composting focuses. Down, they're picking up whatever they want, whatever they would like to eat, and uh, it breaks down. And you can kind of see in the dirt around just small pieces that were left, they're breaking down. So there's a lot of organic systems uh, breaking down and creating really good compost that we can grow some really cool vegetables. We're going to show you that in just a second. Okay, so all the compost that you see us making over there is going to fill these raised beds up, which you can't really see this raised bed because the pumpkin that's growing in the raised bed has taken it over, which is a good sign. But all this are going into these four by eight raised beds. There will be six of those total by the time we're finished with this area. But that's where all that's going. We figure that by rotating crops in this area every two months, we should be able to be bringing food out of this area um, all year long uh, from fall winter especially here in our zone seven eight border in Alabama we can grow things um, most of the winter um, cabbage collard greens spinach of all that stuff will grow over the winter most all winter long so that'll be bringing food for us um, year-round from this area okay so you got a new shirt there I do and what does it say? This is fluid and foul language. Fluid and foul language. Like bird language, not bad language. So that was your birthday present from who? My mom. Okay. <laughs> now what's the chicken's name? Um, this is Sarah. Sarah. Because she's Abraham's wife. In case you're wondering, we got a chicken named Abraham somewhere. Yes. <laughs> okay. Gardens and this is an in-ground garden, but as you can see, we're taking the leaves, the oak leaves, the debris, and I, we talked about the cardboard, and we're using it as a as weed barrier. It's not perfect; weeds are very aggressive. But trust me, without that barrier, we would be knee high in weeds right now. So, works pretty well. We're getting a good compost down here in the garden. As you can see, these tomatoes are looking really good. They're about to start coming in for us. So. Down here, we're replenishing this spot over the winter when this is kind of set and dormant. We'll be bringing manure, we'll be bringing organic stuff back in here to build this up so that we're not depleting our garden area. So, um, so that's basically what we're doing. So yeah, remember to think about your own homestead as a sort of an ecosystem where you're the one managing the ecosystem. Um, what is coming in to your home and what's going out in terms of organic material. You can think about food if you would like, but, uh, and you might be surprised at ways you can develop to take those um, products that are just being thrown away, recycle them, turn them into something productive that's gonna grow healthy food for you and for your family. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hey, comment and tell us what you think, and please don't forget to subscribe below.